Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to Fast 4G 2021. Today is Wednesday and this is the Aconcagua Zone. And for ending the day, we will be having a Purple uh, presenting, uh, excuse me, Eco, Eco Valuator, Basic Ecosystem Service Valuation for Custom Landscapes. Is that right? Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, everything said now. Okay. okay. Uh, is it time to start? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, go on. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for being here today. Uh, I'm happy to be here presenting at the Phosphor G conference. Um, so thank you all for attending my presentation. And I'll give a quick hello in Spanish too. Uh, hola a todos. Estoy muy contento de estar aquí con ustedes. Y uh, muchas gracias para atender mi presentación. Um, so my presentation is titled Eco Evaluator, Basic e Ecosystem Service Valuation for Custom Landscapes. And my name is Eric Perper. So just a really quick introduction to me. So uh, like I said, my name is Eric and I live in Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia in the United States. So I'm on the East Coast of the United States. Um, and just to give you an idea of where I am, uh, so Charlottesville, Virginia is the yellow dot here. And we're about two and a half hours drive from Washington, the capital, Washington, DC. Um, so anyway, I work at the University of Virginia, but this, or this presentation is really not related to my day job at all. Um, I've got a long GIS history. I've been a GIS user for about 15 years now and uh, gotten more into the FOSS 4G community over time. And right now I, I love it. And like I said, I'm happy to be here with all of you. And when I'm not uh, at work or doing a side project, I you can find me rock climbing or skiing. So I don't work for Keylog Economics, but uh, my friend and colleague is the principal at Keylog Economics. And I suppose I was a consultant in this role in this project. But uh, anyway, Keylog Economics is the sponsoring organization of this plugin with for QGIS, which I'll talk about next. But just to talk about Keylog a little bit, there are an environmental economics consulting firm, which basically tries to prove that saving the environment makes economic sense. So they're working on projects uh, around the world, really. And like I said, trying to prove to stakeholders that it is in their best economic interest to save the world or save, save nature, I should say. So EcoEvaluator is basically a Python plugin for QGIS. Um, I won't be really talking about the code or the programming because I don't think that's really the interesting part of this project. Um, but this is uh, freely downloadable for any QGIS user. So I'll provide a link to that later. And this project was funded by the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, which is a United States based governmental organization. So basically the eco evaluator plugin is a simple means of estimating the dollar value of ecosystem services in a study area. So that might beg the question, what are ecosystem services? Um, so basically ecosystem services are the benefits that people obtain from the natural environment. And I should say these are the economic benefits that people obtain from nature. And there are quite a few of them. Uh, they are broken into several categories, such as provisioning services, regulating services, supporting services, and cultural services. So as of right now, the extent of our, uh, I guess the geographic extent of our uh, plugin is limited to North America. So I'll explain more about how to how to use this, but basically we start with one of two land use land cover data sets. So at the moment, those are the National Land Cover Data Set or NLCD, which is 
basically land use land cover classification for the continental United States. And that's here on the left in the white background. And the other land cover data set is the North American land change monitoring system. And that includes the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So each one of these data sets basically breaks the, uh, their area of interest into individual pixels. And each pixel is classified with a land use or land cover data type. And there are about 20 land cover types in each one of these data sets. And some of those, like uh, you can see here on the right, um, urban areas are classified in red. In this case, uh, forest areas are in green. There's desert areas, uh, you know, Arctic tundra, and everything in between. So the Eco Evaluator plugin is a three-step process. So the first step of the process does this, which is it estimates the ecosystem service values for your study area or for your study region. So you start with, let me back up for a second here. You start with a raster data set, which is either the national land cover data set or the NAL CMS. And then also just a vector layer, a vector polygon of your study area, which could be as large or as small as you like, as long as it's in the, in North America at the moment. So a few things that step one does, first of all, eclipse the input land cover raster to the extent of your study area. It also calculates how much e area each type of land cover is present in the study area. And then it also multiplies those areas by each of the associated per hectare ecosystem service values. So let me show you that in action. Oops. So in my little example here, our study area will be Albemarle County, in Virginia, which is the county that I live in. So just to give you some frame of reference here, this is the extent of the study area. And the city of Charlottesville is in the middle of it. So as I said, in step one, there are a few results. So first of all, we start with the National Land Cover data set or the North American Land Change Monitoring System data set and eclipse that to the extent of your study area. So in the event that my study area is Albemarle County, you can see that it is clipped there. So in this study area, you can see that there are some urban areas in the, in the red, some forest, land cover types in the green. Uh, the light green is, or light green yellow is uh, like farmland. And then there's a few others in there. So that is one output from step one. Another output from step one is a table, as you see here. So basically this, um, so as I said, um, this clips the raster area to your study area. So this classifies um, first of all, the study er the sorry the land cover types that are present in your study area, and it gives you a size or a land uh, you know the amount of land in hectares of each one of these land cover types. So, grassland slash herbaceous land cover type there are four thousand one hundred sixty six hectares in our study area, and then each one of the ecosystem service values or ecosystem services available in that study area um, is represented. And then it gives you a minimum, a maximum, and an average estimated dollar value, which is the per pixel worth of each one of these pixels by the ecosystem service. So I'll talk more about that next, because you might wonder, where do these dollar values come from? Who decided on these? So full disclaimer, I was not a part of this part of the process. Um, this is the domain of economists and I'm not an economist, but this information was gathered or created using the benefit transfer method. So the benefit transfer method provides an accessible way of estimating the value of an ecosystem service flows 
based on the values estimated in another similar setting. So what the people at Keylog Economics did was that they referenced governmental documents, uh, scholarly publications, et cetera, that performed ecosystem service valuation in similar regions and similar land cover types around the world. And they use those values to extrapolate the values of any given ecosystem when you're using the EcoValuator plugin. So step two of the process is uh, mapping the value of individual ecosystem services. So as I said, you, you take the output from step one and create a new raster for which the value of your study area is represented per pixel uh, for the user selected ecosystem service. So as I said, there are, there are quite a few ecosystem services that you can choose from. There are, I think, 15 or 16 of them. So basically the output of step two looks something like this. So I know the one on the right here is a little bit hard to see with the colors, but anyway, if we're evaluating the per pixel value of the air quality ecosystem service, the output looks like this. So um, basically these are categorized from light to dark in a graduated color palette. So the white areas are low, Basically, they're not valuable for uh, the purposes of air quality in our study area. The darker values are more valuable, and then the shades in the middle are somewhere in between. So if you're unfamiliar with the geography of this area, basically, like I said, the city of Charlottesville is the main city. That's sort of in the middle, and there's obviously fewer trees um, and things like that. And these areas over here in the dark colors are uh less human development these are forests and things like that concerning the biodiversity value per pixel um it appears that basically rivers so there's a river that runs through the the study area right here which you can see there's also a river on the southern border and then a few lakes and stuff like that in the middle uh, those are more valuable for biodiversity and then step three of the process is that it creates, creates a print layout and exports uh, the layout as a PDF. So in short, you can make a nice map with just a few clicks. And obviously, if you are a you know, QGIS user or have some cartography skills, you can make your own output. But the purpose of this is that somebody who does not know how to use the print composer in QGIS can just input a little bit of data and out comes a nice looking map. So this is the template for what it looks like. Uh, as you can see, I took the average, the, the air quality results from step two of the process and created a map with the print composer. So you can see there's a, you know, basic things that you see on every map, like a title, a subtitle, a legend up here. So one thing that I maybe should have said earlier was that the range of values represented by the ecosystem service value you chose and then some other factors, that is divided into quintiles and then each quintile is represented with a uh, color from the color palette. So as you can see, the dark colors are more valuable, the light colors are less valuable concerning uh, air quality in this case, and then a little bit of credits text there. So future development we'd like to do, this is an ongoing process. It's been ongoing since 2018, I believe. And I've been a part of it since, the, since then. So at the moment, QG, or uh, sorry, QLog Economics has expanded into Vietnam. So they're working more in Southeast Asia in general, but particularly in Vietnam. And they recognize that Vietnam had unique opportunities in the environmental economics arena. So they've actually, my, my colleague, the principal of the company has moved there and set up shop in Hanoi and they're doing projects in and around Vietnam and Southeast Asia. So naturally we like to expand uh, other land use land cover data sets 
that are relevant to Vietnam in this project so that basically um, somebody can get a quick estimate of the, the value of a study area if they're working in Vietnam or elsewhere in so Southeast Asia. And then we'd also like to continue to make it more robust for future versions of QGIS. We are slacking and currently the project is developed for version 3.10 of QGIS. And I know that the current long-term release version of QGIS is 3.16. And I forget the development cycle, but I'm sure that a new long-term release version is coming out soon. So we'd like to make it relevant in the future. And I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues that I've worked with on this project. So first of all, at Keylog Economics, uh, Spencer Phillips and Anna Perry in particular, and then also my fellow developers, uh, Phil Ribbons and Elliot Kurtz. None of us were really skilled developers in the beginning, and I'm not sure we can say that we are now, but we learned a lot about plugin development uh, along the way. So it was a really fun learning opportunity for us. And then I also like to acknowledge the FOS4G community. So all of you that are here today, I feel lucky to be a part of such a great community. And this presentation is my small contribution to the FOS4G community. So thank you all for being here and for attending. So that is the end of the presentation. I've got a few links if you'd like to check out more about the project. So we've got a link to the Keylog Economics homepage and then also the GitHub uh, repository. And if you'd like to contact me, you are free to send me an email. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your talk, Kate. It was very interesting. And now we will have some time for questions. So the first question will be, um, what do you think about the state of the documentation? The state of documentation regarding the plugin or the like Python for QGIS? I think the plugin. The, for the plugin, you said? Let me a moment. Um, if the, well, I'll give you a minute for the person to respond. If the question is regarding the state of the PI QGIS documentation, I will say that it, it has advanced greatly. So the timing was kind of bad when we started the first round of development on this plugin. Basically QGIS 3 had just come out and naturally in an open source project like QGIS, the documents, the, the PyQGIS documentation, which is the Python a for the, the QGIS Python API for QGIS three, that it was not very developed at that point. And I will say that it has come a long way. So thank you very much to all the developers who have contributed to that. Um, all right, thank you. We have another question. When will the plugin be in the general plugins menu? Uh, it is in the general plugins menu. You might, so there, I don't have QGIS up at the moment, but so this is, I guess, how they refer to it, an, an experimental plugin. So um, if you go to the plugin wizard um, and there's a, there's a box in the settings, I think that says show experimental plugins, um, that should allow you to find it. Uh, and I'm sorry that I don't have QGIS up in front of me at the moment. <laughs> no problem. Let's go with another question. Um, how does the benefit transfer? Uh, I think I should copy it. How does the benefit transfer product look like? How was it fed into your building? Could you elaborate on that process a bit more? Thank you. Sure. 
I'll go back in my slides here. Okay, let me put so, it back. So this is something that I am not that knowledgeable about. Um, so as I said in the presentation, this is an accepted method in these field of economics for estimating the value of ecosystem services. Um, so actually, sorry, let me go back. <laughs> let me go back to my finishing slide. Take here. your time. We have enough time. Okay. So, so this first link here um, has more information about the benefit transfer method. So since we have a few minutes, I will go there right now. Let's go here. So we have a like a write-up page about this plugin. And there's a, a few paragraphs here about the benefit transfer method. Um, so to be honest, as, as I said, I was not a part of the, basically the, the process of creating those dollar values for each uh, pixel in the ecosystem service values. But hopefully this will allow you to learn a little bit more about it. Um, I just, I was just the messenger in this case. So I accepted the numbers that they gave me for each ecosystem service value and I just used them. Um, so if you'd like to talk more about that, I can. So first of all, this, this documentation page here uh, will hopefully give a little more information. And then also, if you'd like, I can refer you to the people at Keylog Economics. Uh, to talk more if you'd like. Okay. Thank you very much, Eric. I think there are no more questions. So okay. I think that we can... Uh, well, there is another one. We still have time. Sure. First, uh, well, there is two questions in one. First one is, to what extent do the economic estimates rely on local values versus regional values and versus national, international values? Right. So this is another question I don't feel like I can really answer. Um, so as I said, um, let me scroll back here. So as I said, these, so if you run this, the first step of the plugin, it gives you an estimated dollar value for each pixel for each ecosystem service. Um, as I said, I was just given these values. Uh, I, I am not an economist and I do not feel qualified to answer that question. So I will say again, what I just said about the last question, um, please feel free to read up a little more about the benefit transfer method um, at this site and then also i'm happy to put you in touch with the uh with the people that work at keylog economics if you'd like to talk more about that uh, they have phds in the field of economics and are much more knowledgeable than i am all right then that will be all thank you very much Eric, for your talk and your uh, your answers okay thank you very much